RCR with Paul Brennan, Reality Check Radio. It's time for our political panel this Friday morning here at RCR Reality Check Radio. And in the house, um, Cam Slater is back. Hi, Cam. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good morning. Thank you. I'm good. Olivia Pearson. Oh, good morning, Paul. Nice to be here again. Nice to have you. And Marie Busky in for Marty Gibson this morning. Hi, Marie. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. We've got so many things to talk about. Let's rip into it. And we start kind of uh, with an international story that I'm sure many people have been following. And this is Nigel Farage really beating up Nat West Bank. Olivia, what do you make of this? Okay. They picked on the wrong guy, right? They, oh, they the so guy. did. I Didn't they just? What a great way of putting it. I was having the same thought. Um, so Dame Alison Rose, note the dame. She only got that recently. I think 2022 she got the damehood. Um, has now admitted she's, of course, CEO of NetWest Group, which owns all these banks. Um, she's now admitted that she is the source of that leak to the BBC reporter, um, and she has resigned. Um, She broke client confidentiality and is clearly unfit to be a CEO of NatWest Group. Um, Nigel Farage, I love the comment he made yesterday. He said in a tweet, he said, we bailed them out as a result of their greed and stupidity, and in return, they make vast profits like 35 billion quid a year, and we get repaid by bankers closing branches, um, eliminating ATMs, and not wanting customers whose businesses involve taking cash. Many thousands of people have their business accounts closed, and people write to me in absolute desperation. So, She's gone. Farage has just, I think, done a really good uh, act for humanity here because now he's said that he is going to take this on and defend all those, as he, he says, tens of thousands of people who have been debanked in the UK. Um, and what, what else can matter? As he points out, if you don't have a bank, you're depersoned, um, as Lee Williams found out in New Zealand. Um, so here's the other funny thing is that Dame Alice Rose was the first ever female CEO of NatWest and she broke confidentiality of a customer's private banking information and political views, fed it to the BBC reporter and then tried to lie her way out of it when Farage stood up for himself very publicly. And as Jerry Hayes said to Jason, Jacob Rees-Mogg yesterday on GB News, the ethics of it or lack of them i mean it's so disgraceful these people are acting now without any ethics um all around leaders all around the world ethics have died as a personal virtue and it's just horrendous but so great to see a win for nigel farage on this well what i think is funny about this whole thing is that yet again the elites in the uk have underestimated not only the low rat cunning of Nigel Farage, but his resolve and his, in, you know, intestinal fortitude in the face of, you know, a, a, a despicable attack, really. Yep. And and what he did is just a brilliant case study of lining them up, setting them up, and then taking them for a fall by drip feeding the information that he had. He already knew all this information. Mm-hmm. And he just drip fed it so that he could get the denials. You know, and it's like, you know, a little bit like some of the stories that I've run in the past. You, you never ask a question about something that you don't already know the answer to. Yeah. And um, he set them up uh, brilliantly, got them to lie, then presented the evidence that they'd lied, and then it all cascaded from there, which led to a total destruction and a total vindication on his part for his his part in everything. And it's it's a, a salient lesson that many politicians and elites forget. And every now and then a Nigel Farage pops up and actually just smacks him in the throat. They should have seen that coming, shouldn't they? Like, oh, he must have the information. We Best Surely. affairs up right now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, we're, we're, they were not dealing with a stupid man. It just shows you how stupid they are. Well, that's the thing is that he just lined them up 
And they, sh- you're right, Paul. He, they should have seen it coming. They should have seen it. If Farage is doing this and saying this, he must have the information. And it was just beautiful to watch. And I sat there when it first broke, and I thought, "There's more to this. Mm. Wait, and, just and wait." The, and the importance too, the fact that in the UK they do have GB News, so there is a platform that will allow this to break. How many Ooh. stories like this in places, even in this country, don't get broken? Because yeah. oh, there isn't hundreds. a platform to there, There's nowhere here for yeah. that to break. We're so, always here. So but. that yes, there, just there, shows us. you the yes, yeah. this shows you the importance of creating alternative media like this Ooh. to actually make sure that the truth has at least a, a modicum of being able to get out there and people being able to hear it. And good on Farage. You know, I think he's uh, he's just to me. This is just more evidence and proof that we need more free speech. We well, need. Brexit would have been brilliant training for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was always angry at Farage for winning Brexit and then retiring from politics. On the one hand, you could, you know, I, I understand that he'd done just such an incredible service to Britain with that whole thing, and he never really wanted to go into politics, but found himself the man that needed to stand, and he did successfully. But you always, I always knew that they were going to turn so nasty, 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 and it would be a hard thing to actually get through the whole EU parliament. Um, and he took the sabbatical after that. He rested on his laurels is what I'm trying to say. And it was a great mistake. He might have needed a break though. Could have been yeah, exhausted. He did, but it was, it was, uh, could you imagine Winston Churchill doing that? Oh, you know, got the guys back from Dunkirk. I'm just going to take a break. <laughs> yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. What does it say about uh, this? Might be controversial, but I thought um, female CEOs would have a lot more empathy and care a lot more about. Why would you think that, Paul? Customers. <laughs> yeah, might- no. To be a female CEO, you is the exact opposite of having empathy. I think that you, you have to be. You have to work so much harder to get. Because I'm thinking of all the leader. You know, there's. I, I can think of a whole lot of names, and it hasn't come off too well. Oh no! You you, you see this everywhere. Um, but I'm not saying guys are any better, but, you know. Those banks would have demanded a female CEO because it was all, you know. ESG. Yeah, ESG, ESG diversity quotas. We need a woman at the helm. And this is where they land you. Just like the first act of female voters in US politics and history was the Volstead Act to ban all liquor. It was a disaster. When you get women on a bloody social crusade, they're absolutely terrible in politics, actually. I'm not going to say a word. No, I won't say any more either. Well, I'll Marie. say it for you. More men, <laughs> well, less women. I'll give you two words that counteracts that. Margaret Thatcher. Well, she was a freak, though. Yeah, you can freak. have outliers. It does happen. And 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 she was very unusual. And look how she was so knifed by the lowest uh, moral midgets in the end. That's what happens. But, but she um, still held her head high. She did. She was brilliant. Okay. Agreed on that one. Are we done on Nigel Farage? Oh, I don't think we'll ever be done on Nigel well, Farage, but let's move moment. on. Blinken coming to New Zealand. Let's not forget that Blinken was the guy who got the 51, well, there were 60 actually, but 51 so-called security experts from the security <laughs> um, community to sign off on uh, the Hunter Biden laptop being Russia, Russian, Russian disinformation. disinformation. Just saying he was the guy. Oh, he's an awful um, person. I mean, he's a, not a great Secretary of State, let's just say that. But interesting, I don't think New Zealanders understand what any of this means. I mean, it's actually hard for any of us to get our head around because they are trying to insert America in there at the moment, and we are torn between a traditional ally that, let's face it, has done really good things for our country going back to the Second World War. Long time ago now. Or pit us against China, and that makes it, you know, really dangerous. There's a um, national peace network called World Beyond War, and they've done a big press release saying that Anthony Blinken's um, – uh, visit to New Zealand is not old-fashioned sports diplomacy, as Nanaya Mahuta said, but actually um, it is quite sinister because it's uh, binding us closer to NATO um, in a way where they're extending NATO down into the, well, Indo-Pacific, which means us. 
um, the Beyond Waters, uh, Beyond, sorry, the World Beyond War co-founders, um, they've got this global movement to abolish the institution of war itself. I mean, I think it's kind of stupid to call war an institution. I mean, was a necessary and needed, you know, often. Sadly, well, they like are. In Ukraine. Mm. Well, but, but, no, but, they, but you, we could never have removed Adolf Hitler without a war. We could never no. have defeated, um, you know, a tyranny in many, many instances without a war. Um, you can't just go and talk nicely to tyrants or dictators and tell them to quit. They don't do it. So sometimes yeah, but you have it, to But use it shouldn't a be a business model, though, should it? Well, no. But remember that we were warned about all of this. You know, when Eisenhower, Eisenhower, when mm. Eisenhower re retired from being or um, finished his second stint as uh, as president, he said, you know, we've got to be very careful that we don't allow this, you know, in, uh, military industrial complex to take over this country. And lo and behold, that's what's happened. It's taken a few decades, but they've done it. Absolutely. And the industrial aspect of that is um, the salient part, I think, because that's what we've seen with all this fascism with big industry, um, media included, um, that is connected to the military um, ultimately because they're the, you know, the state is the repository of force. But, um, so, but don't we have to be very careful here because the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline of their ally, okay? So they did that to their, their faithful ally. They're using Ukraine as, a bat as an outsourced battlefield and, you know, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are dying what for nothing because they're not going to win. We will. We had an interview recently with a, a chap in in Sweden who's a New Zealander, but he's a um, professor over there, saying, "Watch out, New Zealand! You could become a proxy battlefield at some point." Yeah, was well, probably I, involving China. Well, I was just about to say that. I mean, China have been infiltrating throughout the Pacific. I mean, Winston called this what eight years ago when he put that billion dollars into the Pacific and he was, uh, everybody jumped up and down and were like, why are you doing this, Winston? Why are you putting this money up there? He was putting the money up there because if we, he didn't, if we didn't put the money up there as New Zealanders, the Chinese were coming in. You just need to go to any Indeed. Pacific island and see the investment. I was in Tonga in January and the first thing you see on the wharf is this, this brand spanking new wharf. Uh, and, and a plaque saying kindly donated by the People's Republic of China. Oh, dear. Well, you know, I'm from Fiji. I was born there. And um, I had a falling out with Baini Marima over a number of years because of his, you know, really toadying to the Chinese. And, you know, it even got to the ludicrous extent where they were building this uh, massive new hotel and apartment complex and they hadn't um, built the foundations properly, and the thing <laughs> is literally leaning. And um, for a while there, it was all stopped, but presumably there was uh, you know, some large um, bribes paid, and then construction started again. But I, I would fully expect that building to fall down in 10 years or so. But the, the Chinese have been into Fiji big time, and that's the, the main reason why I was supportive of New Zealand and Australia ditching their sanctions against the Bainimarama government because all we were doing was forcing Fiji to look elsewhere for assistance. And where they looked, it was straight into China. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese, you should see the embassy there. It is massive. You should see the, the hotels that are owned by the Chinese now in, in Fiji. They've um, been bowling over mangroves and digging up things, and they, they just seem to get away with everything, and it's just this insidious... Yeah, but who's worse? Well, well see, so this is, this is the thing. Well, that's world... the problem, isn't it? I mean, yeah, we, that we've is got these the great third-world countries that we... I we, mean, the Americans we... aren't rocking up and building well, things no, for the Fijians, I mean, are they? they? The World Beyond War co-founders, right? And I would like to see, who wouldn't, a world without without war. I mean, come on, uh, this hacking people up, shooting each other to death, bombing and what the Ukraine is going through at the moment. It's so ugly. You know, when you unleash the dogs of war, you unleash something very barbaric in, in the heart and the actions of man. And no one wants that. But, um, you know, these Raytheon guys. Raytheon want it. Lockheed yeah. Martin wanted. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> but um, World Beyond War co-founders co um, Swanson and Hartzer, they 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 were saying that we need a global 
movement to abolish the institution of war itself, not just the war of the day. If war is to be abolished, then it must um, be taken off the table as a viable option. Just as there is no such thing as good or necessary slavery, there is no such thing as a good or necessary war. Um, they're both abhorrent. But I it's go all motherhood and apple pie and completely unrealistic, Olivia. It's I know this, but 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 what if people are seeking to put us useless eaters back into slavery? Is a war to stop that a moral imperative? Not I would at say all. It, I would say it is. But we still have um, we still have slavery. It's just called wages now. I mean, there's still shackles and manacles. See, I I disagree with that, Cam. I wouldn't so call do it I. wages. I would call it welfare. Well, yeah. well, well, it's Just not. Saying. That's Marxism. Wages is slavery. Well, it it kind of is. If if you're if you uh, like most New Zealanders are a payday away from bankruptcy, and so they keep on going to work, and it was exactly the reason why the vaccine mandates were so awful, right? Because they said to people, if you don't get this jab, you can't have your job. And if you don't have your job, you don't feed your family, you don't pay your mortgage, you don't pay your rent. And so you are a slave to the people who control the system because you're not free to make, you know, the reason why I was able to say, sit, stand there and say, no, I'm not doing that. It was, yes, I've got some principles, but I had the freedom of being able to choose because my lifestyle and my livelihood was not dependent on a vaccine or anything else that a government dreamed up. I mean, they could have said, um, uh, you need to now have a, a digital bank account in order to have a job. Well, that's where they're going to get people into exactly. the slave system. And, and shouldn't, if, you, if you've been oppressed to that level, in the end, war is the only thing you can do to fight that's back. Just, you, you're no, and, the, and, right. the, and, and as Cam pointed out, it, it was morally right that Winston Churchill made war on Germany, after he didn't start it; they did. Um, what well, Neville came, Chamberlain declared came, it. Though. Well, I mean, they came in because Poland was yep. invaded, right? So, and in the First World War, it was because Belgium was. The British Empire twice have gone into a world war on the basis of defending an ally. You know, when they had a commitment, they meant it uh, to 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 another nation state, and the two world wars proved that. I, I say that with venom only because I've had someone recently saying that Germany didn't start any of the wars, and I didn't, nearly died and died of oh, shock. Really? But that's actually quite a common Just ask view the Czechs now. What they think about that? Yeah, well, it's re re revisionist history and the Russians. going on. But here's the thing, though, with the, the China again, is that we're awfully compromised because of our position in trade, um, which is so huge for us and so irrelevant to China, um, and. You know, we are living in venal times where everyone is viable. So we either choose between being allied to the United States in the hope that um, we get better leaders from the United States, like and Trump again. We can't rely leaders. on that. Well, we're going to have to. We're, we're going to have they to. They don't buy our milk powder. Well, we can survive without. You know, why don't we keep our resources for our own people? Why don't we I don't start think we could there? Have, I don't you think we could consume that much milk powder, could we? You're starting to sound like a New Zealand First supporter, Olivia. <laughs> New Zealand First. Well, well, people will accuse us of autarky, won't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Um, but but sometimes autarky, when the shit hits the fan in the global sphere, you need to pull back to what your own country has on offer. And if that's autarky, I'm all for it. Well, it's, it's my default position. I'll defend with my life things that are you know that are dear to me and mine and everybody else can go hang and that's kind of what i i mean i used to be a globalist i used to think that world trade was the way out of this and way out of that and if we trade mm. with china we'll convince them of the merits of democracy and all of that and and you know i've been woken up to that in the last three to four years or five years might even be a bit longer and I'm I'm a nationalist now. I'm thinking about New Zealand first. Mm. I'm thinking about what we should do here. I agree. You know, yeah. a, a, and a good example of that, a classic example of that, is that we're importing all of this dirty coal from Indonesia when we're sitting on Beautiful mountains coal. of 
of clean, much better coal, but we're not allowed to dig it up because we've got lunatics running the asylum. You know, yeah, self loathing lunatics. Yeah, self loathing l- lunatics that won't let us use our own God given natural resources in this country to bet for the betterment of the people of New Zealand. And you know, um, on the weekend, uh, there was a question asked of, uh, of Winston Peters about um, talking about sovereign funds. And he was saying, well, you know, um, some of the Scandinavian, Norway in particular, uh, when they found the oil in the North Sea, if you look at how how uh, Scotland and, and the UK dealt with the oil royalties and how Norway dealt with the oil royalties, um, they're completely different. They and saved everything, didn't they? The Nor- Norwegians put it into a sovereign fund and they're yeah. sitting on trillions and trillions of dollars that's making their the life of their citizens better. Well, we did the same thing as the UK did with our oil reserves that we've still got sitting there, yeah, and, still plenty, there. and plenty more that are there. There's no such thing as peak oil. There's plenty of it there, but no, we're not allowed to use it. And then all of the uh, oil that was you know, used here or brought out, uh, ironically, by the Muldoon government, um, has been squandered and wasted, and we don't have that sovereign fund that's that's giving us those royalties from having those those um, natural resources here. And it's 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 lunacy. And it's and, funny though, isn't it, Cam? How Muldoon was so um, excoriated. He, for, he was derided, those, attacked by the you know the left. But he wing. was right when he said, "Think big. We should yeah. be able to provide." Well, for we got we got physical stuff. Well, all of their electric cars that they all want us to drive are all powered by Think Big projects. Yeah. 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 Go, go figure. And I think um, the average Norwegian citizen, because of that fund, is worth, I think, over $2 million US dollars, every exactly. single one of them. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'd rather have Think Big from an economic nationalist than have Think Big from globalist. Exactly. Think Big from a uh, globalist just means pouring. Just just means pouring yeah. money into Bill Gates's. Um, There's a lot of things small yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. Have we? Well, Blinken. It, I mean, not a nice guy. Got to say. Well, I he's mean, a little rat-faced weasel, really. It's yeah. just like here, America. This government of Joe Biden's, right? Well, they're falling over. How long do you think he'll last? I'm giving him. He's a falling month. over. Not, he's not very long. I say a month or two at the most. I I don't know about timing, but. Yeah, it's not. Well, he'll good. end up not but, being able but, to speak. But whoopee, we get Kamala. Woohoo. No, they'll put the um, guy from Los Angeles in California. What's Gavin his name? Newsom. Yeah. Newsom. And, yeah. And, and he'll come in as vice, and then they'll do a switch. From the Socialist Republic of California. Yeah. They've wanted yeah, they're, 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 He's doing so well there, isn't he? He left his heart in San Francisco. Well, it can't be Michelle Obama now Now that they've got trouble Michael. with Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> what with the, uh, poor, the poor paddleboarder? Anyway, we won't talk about that. We haven't got Michael, time. Michael, big Mike. Let's move to Kitty Allen's car crash. And it's more than just a visit. Well, it's almost a train wreck now, isn't it? It's a wow. total train wreck, honestly. Look, at, at a certain level, I feel sorry for her. But then, yeah, I do too. You know, I, I, I feel sorry for her because I believe that she's been thrown under the bus by by the Hipkins um, ministry, by, by his uh, people. Uh, in there, and it's a useful distraction from a whole lot of other things that are going wrong. Is particularly David Parker, who's flexing his muscles over increasing taxes and things like that. But that that kind of sympathy for her situation kind of runs out when you know when she does a runner from the police after <laughs> the yeah they get the dog unit out to to track her down. Um, she, she's got a reputation around uh, Wellington of um, being a bit of a party girl. Um, she, Do you know who I am? <laughs> well, well, we'll see. This is the thing, though, is that we, we're dealing with absolute mediocrities. A place narcissistic in, mediocre people. Narcissistic mediocrities handed the um, largest powers and biggest They've ministerial portfolios. I mean, goodness sake, she was a justice minister. Justice is a great virtue. And a minister without that virtue ought not to exist. We don't expect perfection, just a strong measure of integrity, but that's too much to ask. But she said in her own words, I have failed failed all those who put their trust and confidence in me. I've let my electric down, electorate down and my party down and all those who relied on me. 
um, that that's it. I mean, that is she said that herself, and that is completely true. I would only add that she let the wider New Zealand public down for bringing such an important office like that of Justice Minister to such a low standard. You know, a bit like the where Mayor of Wellington just recently did. These clowns trample the actual rank of what that office is. And that's the really awful part to me. Because mm. remember the old military instruction, you salute the rank and not the man? Yep. That used to be in play with politics in sunnier days also, but no longer. It's the rank that mattered because a person of integrity would have been elevated to that rank. But now they're just clowns with mental health issues coming out their ears and one breakup well, and they're running away from the But see, that's, that's the thing that galls me the most, right? It, it, we all know people who have had, had issues with mental health. I mean, hell, I, I'll put my yeah. hand up and say I've suffered from depression and things like that. But there's a whole lot of personal responsibility that gets thrown out the window when we start making excuses and saying, oh, tut, tut, mental health. All of this, and then the other thing that's so cringeworthy was the media bending over backwards to Very start this this wahini Maori, and there's so higher standards applied to them, and, oh, and all, well, come on, that's rubbish. I mean, go back to the Muldoon years when when you know um, they they had drunken ministers that were outed in the newspapers. Who was that guy? Oh, look, I'm trying to remember it. it yeah, he was the guy the, from Tauranga. It was probably Tauranga. Rob Muldoon. <laughs> guy from Tauranga. Yeah. Well, Muldoon used to drive drunk, and I know <laughs> that for a fact, you know. And then there's the snap selection. The so, agitator is always brown. <laughs> but 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 in this case, it's like, oh, okay, so Kiri Tapu Allen's Maori. She's a woman. She's she's a diversity, you know, LGB2, yeah, alphabet person. Um, so, oh, no, that's okay. We can just you know, mitigate her behavior by saying she had too much pressure. That's, you know. Why is she driving? It's, it's bullshit. Like ministerial cars. They can be shown well, driven anyway. Well, that's the other thing, right? Yeah, that's is the it, other thing. That's the mm. other thing. Is like she, why didn't she have VIP transport? Why didn't she know how to use Uber? Every drunk um, uh, trolley dolly around uh, Wellington knows you can get an Uber in Courtney Place for five bucks to yeah, anywhere else. Yeah, you can else. get an Uber. But the Post, yeah. can, they, the post revealed that um, Ellen's, um, chauffeur threatened to quit in 2021, frustrated uh, with her last minute cancel. Do you know who that is, right? too? I know who that is. That's her uncle. Ellen. Ellen. It's her what? uncle. It's, it's her, uncle? her uncle. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So she, but she's had multiple complaints. She's got had yeah. multiple complaints of of uh, 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 bullying and and you know overbearing behaviour. And you know, if you talk to these people, and like this, I learned this very early on in my political career. My mother used to invite in the drivers of all the ministers and everyone that, that they would leave sitting out in the car. And she would say, like, come downstairs, get into the pool room and have a uh, cup of tea. Have a cup of tea. And I'd go down there and boy, did I learn a lot about that. That's some great stories, huh? But they all said the same thing. They didn't like having labor in power because they treated the workers like them like rubbish. It's always, it's always the, it is always the lower classes that treat other people in a role, a, a work role, shabbily. Well, mm. so, okay, this is where I'm, I'm sorry, I've been quietly sitting in the corner here. But I was just about one, to say, Marie, here come she on. comes. Here she comes. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Okay, the thing with Kiri Tapu isn't one of the lower classes. Kiri Tapu is from the highest echelon of Māori elite. She has been indulged handed to, I don't think she's had no said to her a day in her life. She's breezed through school. She's breezed through university. She's been one of those, probably not a Chardonnay socialist, but she's probably been, you know, something else. She's, she's been right at the thick of all this um, affluent student Marxist politics. She's been out and had funding to do whatever women fancy that she wants to do ideologically, which has gone and led her into politics. She has led an absolutely charmed life is far from any mahi, um, wahine Māori young woman in this country can live. Like now, yourself, for instance. And so she would possibly be saying, oh, no, but I'm here to aspire young um, young women. This is the pressure. This is the cross that I have to bear. The reality of it is, is she's had absolutely everything handed to her on a ponamu platter and she's stuffed it up. 
So that's and really privilege then, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, with with a side order of puha, I can tell you. Well, that. how come Chris Hipkins Electric saying she's puha. at the top of her game? He said she's at the top of her game. Well, it's not much of a game then, is it? Well, that's the prime minister saying that. Well, the guy's an idiot. There's, I mean, there's, a, there, there's those young, those young politicians have this air of um, elitism around them. Tori Farno fits into this category. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's she has exercised similar behaviours. Um, and then you look at uh, the ones that are slightly older, but the behaviour's not bad. I mean, Portal Williams, hmm, Mecca, whoa. You know, the, there is a an attitude uh, They're issue. They're all from your area. They're all <laughs> East yeah, What's Coasters, going on there? All coasties. But they just, I just get really frustrated with Kitty Tapu because she... She had so much. She had so much to offer. There was so much there that she could have done. And she she stuffed it up. And sometimes you've just got to, whether it be in business or in life, when you've stuffed it up, you've just got to put your hand up and say you've stuffed it up and you've just got to grit it out. She's not done that. And she's uh, she's I just think she's gone and created this perfect world around her. Everyone has pandered to her and she's gone and inflated herself beyond. I would be worried for her now. Yeah, yeah, I would no, be. yeah, I'd be worried I, for a very I, I hope she heals her broken heart. I hope she regains her health, happiness, and her senses. She clearly took leave of them. Um, human beings can be very fragile when they're in pain, but we're now dealing with total mediocrities in office rather than the high moral fibre, and I guess that's the part I grieve for. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. What you said, said there, Olivia, is, is perfect because... You know, I went and um, picked up Jamie Lee Ross at, literally out of the mental unit at the hospital. And, um, you know, a, a broken man whose entire car crash was live on television pretty much, apart yeah, from the, yeah. the train on the tracks. But people said to me, well, why did you do that? Why did you go and help him? The guy's a dick and all of this sort of stuff. And I said, well, he was a mate before he was a dick. And yeah, fair and, enough. and you have to go and help your mates even because because who else can you rely like- on? Yeah, exactly. No, no and, right. and, and you know, I mean, the other thing I just want to say is that breakups are very painful, Some for some more than others. Breakups can really, really undo you as a human being. Um, okay, you put yourself together, and um, but, but love comes with a price, and when your world is invested in another person and that all comes to an end, it is very, very difficult. Um I always have sympathy for people that are going through a breakup, but if it drags on and on and on and on and on, then it gets yeah. a bit painful. Then, then they're the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody has, has these issues that come up from time to time and it's not the issue that defines you or the incident that defines you. It's how you handle the incident and the issue that defines you. And that's the problem here is what Kiri Tapu Allen has done is showing a lack of total a total lack of individual responsibility. Um, and, you know, she's basically, when confronted, run for the hills, literally in this case, uh, run from the hills from her mistakes. And uh, and she does need to front up to that, and she does need to deal with that, and she's going to have to deal with that in, in the justice system now because that's how bad it's got. But it should never have gone that far. Uh, and ironically, she's, she crashes into a vehicle right outside her. What was it a, a high justice official? Or something? I think, that's yeah. odd, I think isn't there's it? I think there's more to come on that. Oh, okay, all right. So she completely broke, didn't she? She broke. Oh, Did is she you... heading that way? No, I mean she. No, no, I was just a... responding to Cam's thing. More to come. Oh. Was she heading that way? Uh, that yeah, going that I think we're going to find out. That, reason? Yeah, I think we're going to find out that there's some connection there. Because it's look, it's there's some rather cute things that have happened. Like there's the photograph um, of the car taken from the house. You've got uh, the video that was then published. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, two days yep. ago. Um, there's a connection there somewhere. You know, and if you look at the angle that the car is on and you listen to the explanation, it's almost impossible to see how the car ended up where it did. And so I think we're going to find out a bit more information about that. And we've. And seen you wouldn't this. leave it in the middle of the road, would you? Well, she got out of it and ran away, didn't she? Yeah, but, I mean, that's a traffic hazard right there. Someone come around the corner, or am I? Oh, well, that's the thing. Mind you, it is Wellington. There's nobody around it. And time. Willie apparently called, was on the phone, and um, 
Do you think he said, don't drive, just don't drive? Uh, Willie Jackson chiming in that way he did. He reckoned it wouldn't have happened had he been in Wellington. Uh, God, he's you know, so but, sanctimonious at times. Oh, so sanctimonious. But, but here's the thing, you know, I guess there's a certain high-profile radio presenter that won't be offering to drive Kerry Tapo Allen anytime soon. No. Okay. <laughs> and we can't say the name because, you know, name suppression, but. Well, I just All hope right. she gets okay. her gets her yeah. mojo. Oh, back, I know. Yes, but I know stays out of office. It's easy to work that one out, by the way. Okay, okay. Let's move on to Billy TK and Vinnie Eastwood. Upcoming appeal against their sentences for peacefully protesting, considering that guy who went crazy with the guns in Auckland downtown had done what he had done and and was at home with an ankle bracelet. So, just saying. Well, I mean, I you know. Coming on the back of what just happened with Kerry Ellen, um, it's instructive because, you know, Vinnie, Vinnie Eastwood and Billy Takahika, Takahika, could you correct me on that one, Murray? Um, their, their case comes up for appeal against sentencing on the morning of Monday, the 31st of July. Um, there should be absolutely, mm, try not to swear, no question that these two men do not belong in jail. They do not belong in jail. Um, Guy Hatchard wrote last week, um, sorry, yesterday or today, last week we witnessed with horror the murder of individuals and the shooting of policemen in central Auckland. We now know that the perpetrator was under home detention for very violent offences committed against his whanau. Um, during this detention, he was also allowed freedom to go and work and attend work. Um, contrast that with the current jail sentences against Mr. Eastwood and Mr. Tikahika for minor actions that do not involve any violence. I was at all those protests. I went to every single one through the lockdowns and they were so mild and peaceful. I just cannot understand that anybody at those uh, is now facing a prison sentence. Because they want to send a message, Olivia. Yeah, they want to send other, a message. Other than because they want to make an example of them. And we should not put up with this. Um, Look, I've got, know, no, I've got no truck with um, Billy TK or or even Vinny. I've met, I've met Vinny they're just Eastwood now multiple men. times. They're, they're just... Look, they're just people that are that are out there protesting against a a, a, a tyrannical government. But the way that yeah. they've been treated is akin to the same way that um, Brian Tamaki was treated. They were just prominent people that they decided they wanted to smack with a big stick. You know, can't we just move on from all of this stuff? You know, they're, well, they're continuing to victimise people. They um, have been treated worse than a person with an ankle bracelet on who strangled a girl. Yep. Has been treated. That's and and who was justice minister then? Was it Kerry Allen? Yeah. Who came well, before? Well, there's been five of them, so you know it's a yeah. it's a bit of potluck, really. Yeah, so it? no one will take responsibility, but it's just disgusting. Um, and I don't I don't I don't agree with anything. You know, you know, I mean, they're on the same side with the freedom stuff, but they're not my teacup, so to speak. Billy TK and Vinnie Eastwood necessarily. But the point is that they haven't done anything mm. worthy of going to prison over. And that what are we just going to sit back and watch our flipping fellow citizens go to prison? Well, for? What can we do? Well, you, you do. I mean, we can complain about it here, but yeah. what can we actually do? Well, you, you've got to be careful too because you're dealing with judges now and they're really precious. And so if you criticise a judge in a particular way, you get the likes using the exact same example of this rat bag who shot two people because he, he got sacked from his job. Um, if you criticize the judge, you get these hand wringing articles in the Herald saying, Oh, it's terrible. They're victimizing the judge. And well, they're siding, they're this, siding, aren't they? Yeah. That, that's the problem. That's right. And, but the judges themselves, if you criticize them and you do it in a strong way and they get really upset about it, there'll be a morning tea at the Northern Club and they'll work out how they're going to do you over for contempt. And there isn't a judge that you can go before that hasn't already agreed to the whole thing. Gosh, okay. Wow. All right. Well, um, time is... Well, I mean, uh, all I know is Billy TK has personally spent $97,000 on legal costs. That would cripple any of us. Well, that's part of the strategy as well. You bleed them dry. That's yeah. the penalty. That's the punishment. Yeah. The process is the punishment. 
Lawfare, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah. I know. I've been a victim of it. Okay. We've got a couple more subjects. Um, there's the Just Oil uh, or, or Stop. Oh, can I do this one? Just Stop Oil. Let's be quick on that because we want to get to Cry Baby Kate. Yeah, well, these just stop oil people. We've got them here in New Zealand. They go and sit on motorways. And these are the and people who glue their hands to the road. Glue their hands to the road and and everything. Desecrate art. Yeah, and yes. listen, look, they're doing it in the UK. And, for that. and and in the UK, you do things like this, and you get these splendid people who decide to um, create a counter organisation. So they've got just stop oil. This counter organisation is called just stop pissing people off. <laughs> and uh, and and they just the name. Yeah, they've just start, decided that they're going to start doing to the Just Stop Oil people the same things that they're doing to the general public. And what they did is they kettled uh, some of these activists who were on one of their slow marches. What does and, kettled mean? Well, the police have a tactic in the UK called kettling, and they surround you and give you an exit. Uh, uh, right. And so you end up like being the spout. Dumped. Yeah, like a, a spout of a kettle, and, you, and you're surrounded by the kettle, and the only way out is through the spout. You go through the spout, and you end up where they want you to be. Yeah. So, so these glued so, to the road. <laughs> so these these new counter activists kettled these people, and uh, and had them surrounded and um, taken off the off the highway, and uh, and and had this all for about thirty minutes. But the most spectacular one they did is that the, the Just Stop Oil people had a, a big lunch at the Heritage Centre in, in Bow in East London, and they infiltrated it and released these uh, balloons with helium in them. But attached to each balloon was a, a, one of those panic alarms that, they, that mostly women carry in their purses and things like that. <laughs> and the, the place that they had it has got this enormous vaulted roof in the building and so these helium balloons with these piercing sirens oh, they... all, all floated up into <laughs> I the saw that. stuck on the <laughs> roof, yeah, stuck on the ceiling, good. and drowned out these luddites. Really, these fools that are you know running around with plastic signs. What, you know, do they ever stop to think that their signs were made? Um, well, no, with because oil. they're in a zombie state. With oil. I've seen the yeah. videos. I've seen the videos, and they're in a zombie state. Yeah. And particularly the older women. There are quite a few older women in these um protest groups. Sorry to go back to that. But they 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 walk along like they're you know, they've been hypnotized. It's mass formation. Yeah. It's another form of mass formation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotten worse since the end of the pandemic because the way to cure people of one mass is to give them another. Oh, so this is why to this, the, to the next so one. they've gone and transferred a lot of these feelings oh, okay. into this new mass, which is why these climate nutballs have come up out of the woodwork because that's where a lot of the ones, where do, where do all the COVID activists and COVIDians go now that the, you know, most people are over COVID? Well, they've told us where they're going. They, they want to have lockdowns. And uh, and these sorts of things to help um, arrest climate change. They've said it out loud. That's yeah, sort of... yeah. Susie Wales said, um, "What she called it, soft power, didn't she? That COVID was soft power." It's um, a bit rich coming from her. She's pretty soft. Well, I mean, you know, the the idea of using soft power on us in order for us to be ushered into Is she an harder power on over now. Climate change. Well, that's they're all part of the whole. Because it was endo endometriosis agenda. last week. We're on to climate now with her. <laughs> she should just really? stick to glowing. <laughs> Woman's a genius. Oh no, well that's okay. If Susie needs needs a new cause, actually, Kitty's single now, so maybe we could set them up. Matchmaker. I've seen uh, her with a guy in the supermarket, though. I don't think. No, well. Susie's married. Ah, well that means nothing these He's days. He's a skinny Dan. bloke. Oh, with a man. He's a skinny he, bloke with a man bun. I saw him pushing oh, the trolley in the course. supermarket. Of course he was. She was doing the shopping. Of course. But these oil protesters, uh, stop oil protesters, seriously, I really mean this. When they go in and desecrate art, great works of art, I just, that just makes me so insane with rage. Well, I just can't believe they get away with that. Well, that's the mass formation kind of mm -hmm. thing again, ends, isn't it? The ends justifies the means, Marxist. Someone's going to have a go at them at some point. Although they already are in Australia, they're doing it. And, uh, you know, there's a brilliant video that was uh, posted la last week of um, these women that were sitting there on, on the road and doing their, you know, blocking the road. And then along comes 
this uh, woman truck driver and she just gets out of her truck and she walks over to the first woman who's there and grabs her by her hair <laughs> and and just drags her out of out of the way. How and delicious. Then, and then gave her a clip on the way through as well and then gets back in her truck and drives off. Yeah. Well, remember yeah. that woman that was trying to get her mother, I think, to the doctor. This is in London. And she touched them with her Range Rover. She actually, you know, I'll run over you. I'll run over you. And she did actually touch it with her. She got done, of course. Yeah. But that's what they deserve. They do. I and mean, I'm sorry, when they when they desecrate art, as far as I'm concerned, they deserve death. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's um, a bit extreme, Olivia. No, no, that that is that's on that the record. Is, that is so evil and wicked and beyond our own. They think they're doing God's time work. Frame, that, that is, well, they they think they're evil. doing God's work. This is the problem. They, well, they don't believe in God, so well, they can't be doing God's work. work. I, I would love to see some of our work. great inventions. There are people that have, in, have invented many times energy that doesn't need oil. I, I'm happy for oil to die if we get something else. i got but no problem works. with oil. No yeah, problem with oil but, at all. But they're not letting those inventions uh, go through to actually being pr- produced um, and perfectly natural substance, right? My, my my view on climate change is that I think that everybody in New Zealand should have the right to be able to grow pineapples and mangoes in their back garden, even in in Vicargo. So I think we should have more global warming. I actually interviewed someone about that uh, a while ago, and it, it is possible. All right, we're, we're short on time. Um, are we here now? This is uh, Cry Baby Kate. Is this the spin off piece? This is the spin-off piece, yeah. Okay, uh, Marie. Uh, Kate, 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 Kate. Kate Hannah from the Disinformation Project, which I have said on. ringer. You yes, asked, no, I have said on record that she's the only woman I know who's got the grandstand view of the inside of her own anus. She <laughs> is somebody who. I like it. <laughs> he has gone and she has written this piece essentially. And actually, some of the piece I agree with. Shocker. Uh, and it's around, again, Speaking out about the silencing of women, which is something that in counterculture I spend a lot of time talking about, the silencing and the erasure of women. So I saw this headline and thought, oh, actually maybe we might find some common ground. Uh, I fear not. Uh, Essentially, the entire piece is around, it is setting it up days out from the consultation period for the online censorship laws which closes off in a few days and I think this has been quite deliberately put out as a justification a soft justification of why those you know she wants those laws we know along with the RNZ series just saying yes exactly so uh the, so there are articles uh, a piece of uh, Paragraph in here, women have told me they've refused to speak, uh, refused speaking requests, TV requests, and as harassment always has spiked if you've been in the news. There is a critical need to understand the growing use of technology to stalk, threaten, hack, and ultimately silence high-profile women. Well, they tried to do that to me with Nikki Hager's dirty politics. It, well, you're not a woman. About it. Have you got tits, Cam? No, I know. But yeah, the, I have. The, used to. Moobs, moobs. So she's so the entire piece is literally a Crimea river of they've been mean to me online. Well, that's what the RNZ series was. First yeah, episode yeah. is all about politicians feel feeling insecure. Well, and they yeah, should. and they should. you know yeah, what? Yeah. I just I have to admit, I this gets makes my blood boil because I have been on the receiving end of, of all of this. And in terms of she's sitting there saying, that's, well, that's because you're a mad knitter, Marie. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time, <laughs> but she is, she's ringing the bell essentially that she is, she's a, she's someone who's spent all her time playing with matches out in the public sphere. And now that she's been burned and she's not liking it coming back the other way. I've been out there, I've been done that, I've had people rail down on me, and I can tell you right now, she's claiming it's a misogynist movement, misogynist no, my ass. Women. It's women, women that do it. It's yeah. women that do it to other women, and they've always been doing it to other women. Mm-mm. And she is, she's not liking it, she's feeling it, She's everything that she's done here, she's encouraged herself at the end of the day, she's the architect of this design. She's gone and created this framework 
And people are now starting to rail back and push back against it. They've had enough. They're sick and tired of playing the sick hunger games that her and her little elitist buddies have set up. The tributes have turned around. They're going, no, we're not playing by these rules anymore. And and she's she's not liking it. She's not liking it. Do you really think she's not liking it or she kind of perversely enjoys it because it keeps her relevance level of relevance going. It's a level yeah. of narcissism. There is that, a level of narcissism. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and she's sitting blowing. there. No, and she's sitting there complaining about all her little buddies, like she cites Jacinda, she cites Susie uh, herself, all these other journalists, these unnamed sources, and it is so awful. They're having to self-censor. Well, maybe and they I shouldn't sit- be tyrants and bastards. Well, and, I'm sitting you know, here and I yeah. think to myself, well, what about people like Katie Hopkins? What about people like Naomi Wolf? What, what about, about people like Ian Hussey Ali, you know, who you still have have bodyguards? You know, <laughs> Barry Weiss. There's lists and lists and lists Barry of them. White? But it's not Barry just women. Weiss. But it's not just women. Like, go and have a look Posey at the Parker. people. Go and have a look at the people who reply to my, some of my tweets <clears throat> or X's or whatever. Oh, they're, they're really down. nasty, Cam. I like, know they, they, are. they go trolling through history and finding a picture of me getting knocked out by a professional sportsman, Jesse Ryder, in a charity boxing event. And they post it there <laughs> saying, Is this you? Is this you? Yes, it was me. I raised $15,000 for kids' cam by getting my face punched in by Jesse Ryder. Yeah, what, what did you, you ever do? Yeah. What did you ever do? And then another one oh, Is this a picture of you? you you're fat. You could lose weight. You haven't dodged any. Not anymore. Effect. No, exactly. But this is what they do. And you don't hear me carping and whining no. about it after that little rat face get Nikki Hager wrote a, a, a complete conspiracy theory filled book about a whole lot of stuff. I was vilified in public. I had, you know, media camped on my doorstep. Did I moan about it? No. What I about when you and- had your stroke and Phil Gifford got on the radio and went to town? Yeah, went to town and, and hoped that it hurt and a whole lot of other things. said you a, deserved it. said I deserved it. It's just a nasty, nasty and man. I mean, but- that's someone at your level, Cam. I mean, I'm I'm not even there. I'm I'm a knitting lady who has a, yeah, has a video called a that's, damage, channel, that's right? suspect and, in, and in of itself. I've right. even had it in terms of cancellation. I've had Instagram profiles uh, completely set up entirely to try and destroy me. Wow. I've got a police file, I, a police file number. I've been to NetSafe. I've got, for this prep today, I actually thought I have a file that I keep of all the abuse that has been sent. And I, I gave don't up look on at it for me yeah, years like, ago because I don't have a spare warehouse to keep it no, all. No, well, so I went cat cast my eye through it. I haven't looked at it for a long, long time. And I just looked at it and I thought, oh, really? And and, and to me, it just puts this piece, this crybaby piece from Kate Hannah. And I look at this and I think, you know, darling, Winston Churchill once said fear is a reaction courage is a decision. She is reacting on fear. And you know what? She needs to just put a big girl pants on and start finding some courage because that's what the rest of us in, in New Zealand do. But obviously she lives in Aotearoa and she likes to cry about it. What do you think the future so. is oh, for She's in people. an ivory tower. Mm. What, what's you know? the future for people like her? And, well, what, you know, what, what, well, what where are they going to end up? I mean, where's it going to wash up for these people? Well, what she's doing really is just crying a river of liberal tears so that she can put that into that little hand basin that, so she can rinse her hands of all and the purify. And, and purify, purify herself. You know, yes. it's just bollocks. Where well, are they going to end up? They'll end up where they deserve to be ended up end up when their funding is cut it is cut. Yeah. The Auckland University needs to come clean on who's funding them. Uh, maybe but this is all about keeping government. funding but, going, isn't it? Yeah, it's all about yeah, keeping funding yeah. going. Because she does all of this in order, and then they pull out those softball uh, RFPs so then people like them can keep going. And the reality of it is is that they they just love all of this. They want these online censorship laws to go through. Mm. It's really, really important, everybody out there, if you haven't put a proposal in, we've made it easy. Go to defendfreespeech.co.nz. You've got until the 31st to uh, to do it. We need to actually show them that with that is not on because if that goes through, these sorts of conversations won't be able to happen. No. Conversations no, no. like Nigel Farage and the debunking won't be able to happen. But see, that's it is, the, that's the reason why I keep harping on about why we need to have... Big a brother's cantank- big sister. Yeah, why we need to have a cantankerous scallywag and a rascal put back into parliament because that guy keeps lists of names um, for people who deserve Utu and Kate Hanna should be on those lists along with most of the media for the you know, for their 
public interest journalism fund um, excesses that you know there needs to be a media utu and a disinformation project utu list so that when they get in there say no no we're not funding that no sorry you need another job goodbye see you later mike mcelroy yeah, yeah. the police um from the firearm safety authority he should be high on the list sfo put them on there as well but where was kate hannah when um we had to experience absolutely off the charts hate directed at people who refused to violate well, their that own was okay. autonomy. That was all right. To, yeah. So because I, we were purveyors of mis and disinformation. Well, they Olivia, called us they called us murderers. Well, well, they Olivia, they, they, they made they, lockdowns our fault. And remember they say genocide quite were. a bit too. But yeah, remember, yeah. Olivia, you were othered, you were boycotted, yeah. you were blacklisted. Yeah. And Kat, where was Kate Hanna then when that I, was happening to you? She was and, probably cheering it on and holding oh, a picture. She would have been cheering it on. And the worst thing is when I got all those death threats and had to get a detective to come to the apartment to wade wow. through my computer and all that stuff, um, the worst comments were from women. You know, They're always from women. I mean, mm. you know, I've been called everything under the sun. My particular favourite was homophobic because that just cracked me up because my best friend is gay and he th- thought that was hilarious. But they, th- it was all women. 99% of the people that threw abuse at me were all women. And these are women who are all in this cult of social justice. And I tell you what, the line between ally and asshole is absolutely wafer freaking thin. Mm, yeah. Can I just do a Kate Hanna impression? Because sure. the way she speaks just irritates me so much. Let's hear Tell me how good this is. Um, hello, I'm a very intelligent, credentialed expert on white supremacism and the far right and the alt right. They like she affects this gay man's speech. Well, like, she is a gay what? man. Possibly. I mean, or maybe it's the other way around, gays. Are, but this, I mean, expert on the alt right. It's just yeah, the it, it kind of sounds like her. Yep, super yep. affectatious, and um, but it's like that. Um, well, that's for but that's for a reason too. That's it's that let Sanjay mad as a hat or whatever his name is. Yeah, where did um, he come uh, from? Well, he was he's a Tamil tiger. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> He, what does he know about New Zealand? Sorry. Just no, but he knows plenty about terrorism and violence and all from Sri Lanka. That's where he's from. Yeah, he came here and now he's saying, oh, this. Wasn't terrible. he like an alternative news reporter there? Yeah. But I think he was, he'd know all about. He's actually very nasty, that guy. Yes. He's super nasty. And that's, they are, you know, there's no let and, live, let, let and let live with these people. They're not going to leave us alone to just get on with our lives and try and so make we, our so, way. See, so we just snigger at them and go, <laughs> okay, mate. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, that's you see, you that's know, like, very alt-right. Yeah, you know, but we just snigger at them and they go on about oh, white supremacists. You know, I've been involved in politics for a long time in New Zealand and I have never met a white supremacist. That, And if I had met somebody with out their kind of views, you just point at them and do the old Simpsons thing, you know. Ha 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 ha! You're a dick. Go away. Yeah, but you know, but, but 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 it's but it's it gets construed really. There'd be twelve Nazis in the whole of New Zealand. They all live in Christchurch, and we're you know living no, in a, in a no, squalid flat. And no, but here's black the things. thing, Cam. Is like to make this distinction is that white culture was a superior culture. The Anglo-Saxon world gave us Christianity, freedoms. It was the seedbed that liberty fell on in America. You know, that was white culture that gave us that, and it was superior, far more superior than living in Blim in Afghanistan, I can tell you that. But, so there's a truth in that, right? But what it's been spun at, now that we're in the dying days of democracy, um, very Mm -hmm. liberal democracy, um, anybody that loves their culture and happens to be white gets called a white supremacist. And th- that playing with the language and, and marking you out in that way is so insidious. Well, it's the, look, it's the Goebbels playbook. You find a, a, a sector of society, you demonize them, you label them, you demean them, then you start passing laws against them. Then you start controlling what they can do, where they can go, who they can associate with, what businesses they can own, and eventually you um, put them in trains and you march them off to the death camps. 
it's a very deliberate process. It's been proven over and over and over again. It was done in Africa with the the Hutu and the Tutsi, in, you know, in Rwanda. Mm. Exactly the same tactics. And we saw that exact, it's almost like Jacinda Ardern said, well, I need some ideas about how we can control the population. Oh, I'll just go to the library, Goebbels, Joe Yosef Goebbels. Oh, yes, here it is. Here's the book. Yeah, we'll, well, well, well are, actually, they, they consulted Klaus Schwab. And, and uh, women are at the sharp end of the spear. Them. Women, look who did the um, the Paula Penfold. Okay, she's did, <sighs> she did that thing. Susie Ferguson. Okay, she does that. That's exactly the same. Is your bug there, April? Well, I just wonder. It's supposed to be so such a better world with all of this, but they're the tip of the spear. Kate Hanna. Goes Susie on, Wilde. Goes There's on. too many women in political crusades. There's too many women. I Probably tell you, they, shot for they don't it. think objectively. They don't think long term. They think emotionally through a very uh, strange female. And as Jordan Peterson says, reputational means. damage is their number one thing. And that's probably why all the abuse there, that there you There was a reason that the about. successful world was one but run by men. Women found a productive role in the world that men gave us. That's the truth. And Camille Paglia has said that till she's coming, till it's coming out her ears. We women found a productive role because men had made such a great civilization for us to come out of our homes and have washing machines and dryers <laughs> and fancy things to go out and be able to have nice jobs. Yeah, we're all, you know, but, it, but women it all, never give that credence. Uh, it all men. started to go downhill, didn't it, Olivia, when we gave women the vote? I, I actually do agree with that. But, you know, you were never going to have the modern world any other way. No. All right, I think we're, we're done for time, and that's a good place to end it before we get lined up lined up and shot by someone. Um, and that's not an invitation, by the way. Our overladies uh, will, will, will have stern words. But, but, but yeah. look at that. Women are great with um, community organisation and all the rest of it. Um, but what I'm talking about is these, these things that, that, that seek to have power over people in politics when, um, like the CEO of that NatWest Bank that did that to Nigel Farage, she is not an objective thinker. No. You know, she had an emotional reaction on the guy's politics and then sought to take his bank, well, was happy for his bank accounts to be taken away. That is um, And happy appalling. to talk about it with anyone. If you, you know, it's interesting, Olivia, you say that. You know, if you ask a policeman or police person, a police officer, if you ask a police officer who the most vicious and nasty fighters and users of violence are, they won't say gang members, they'll say women. And if you've ever seen um, a, a few drunk Sheilas having a fight, you know who uh, I am in the street. In the street, uh, it's nasty. Oh, yeah, yeah. just broken a few vicious. up in my time in nightclubs. I remember yeah. um, um, who wrote Once for Warriors, Alan Duff. Yep. Yeah, he, that was a he, documentary. Okay, yeah, he he said the same thing that the the the, the visual aspect of women women brawling was just so disgusting growing up that it was it's just so undignified you sort of expected it from men but to see women doing it was just so bad it's left a scar on him okay let's uh, leave our political panel right there for this friday morning really interesting lot covered thank you uh, so much for marie for coming in Really appreciate that. Oh, you're most welcome. The big fella will be back next week. Yeah, the good to have fella. you with me, Marie. Yay. Yeah, there you Yay. go. And uh, good to see you too, Olivia. And, Thank um, you, Paul. Interesting uh, finishing up words there. And uh, Cam <laughs> Slater. Thank you, Cam. No problem. Thank you, Paul, for having me this morning. And uh, as always, I've enjoyed it. Cool. Let's do it next Friday. RCR with Paul Brennan. Reality Check Radio.